this area is, you know, in between two picnic areas. You know, why don't you mow this so that we can walk across there? And what we say is, well, if you don't mind walking around for a couple of years, you know, the native trees will come back. The seedlings are there. We just have to give them an opportunity to grow. First, it was Hurricane Rita in 2005. Then came Hurricane Ike in 2008. Both storms slammed the Texas coast, taking lives, destroying buildings and homes, causing millions of dollars in property damage. Several state parks were hit as well, their beauty altered by a massive loss of vegetation. Today, the land is healing. Despite the destruction, there is new life and ironically, new opportunity to help restore what was once lost. It's hard to believe that it doesn't seem like it's been that long ago. It's still a pretty fresh memory sometimes. David Weeks is the superintendent of Martin Dias Jr. State Park. He's talking about his memory of Hurricanes Rita and Ike and their impact on the park places in this area right here that you could not even see the ground surface. There was so much debris on the ground. Your way in is blocked by the storm debris on the roads that you actually have to stop and physically cut your way into the park. You know, we're out here every day and we take pride in the parks and, you know, to see it damaged, it's not so much discouraging as it is just heartening because you can see out there, if you look out through the woods, how open it is and you also notice that there's quite a few pine trees that uh, are sticking up there that are dead. So those trees were damaged by the storm. Uh, they didn't die immediately but because of bug infestations or uh, dry weather, drought conditions, they died. When Hurricane Rita hit the park, the vegetation was so dense here that falling trees created a domino effect. Two years later, what Rita started, Hurricane Ike finished, creating large open areas that introduced new diversity to the forest. With the overstory gone, all the uh, underbrush and uh, new trees, which is creating the problem with the invasive species, which are like the tallow trees growing right here, and then the dog fennel weeds that are growing up. And we've seen a tremendous growth in our small animal population, as well as our uh, deer population here in the park. We have less trees, but we certainly have more wildlife. As far as our visitors, I can't tell you the number of visitors that have come up here after the hurricane and cried because they've been coming here for so many years seeing these big magnificent oaks and magnolias and then all of a sudden there are so many of them down on the ground. In fact, it was those two very species of trees that Hurricane Rita blew down on top of the park's nature center. We had a large red oak hit a magnolia and both of them hit this building and completely totaled this half of the building. We lost a lot of our exhibits inside, uh, some of our books, some of our educational materials. Thanks to my taxidermy friends and a lot of volunteers, we've been able to restock the Nature Center, making exhibits, hands-on activities for kids and adults. We lost anywhere between 35 to 40 percent of our trees from the two hurricanes. Originally, this whole area was part of the big thicket, made up uh, more of longleaf pines than the other two pines that we had. All of this area was completely clear cut right after World War II. So uh, they got all the longleaf pine and left a few of the loblollies. So what came back was loblollies. So when uh, we knew we were going to have to do something with this area, we decided to try to help put it back to the way it was originally. Pretty soon though, say in 25 to 30 years, this area will look like the area with the tall pine trees again. Just down the road and also impacted by Hurricanes Rita and Ike is Village Creek State Park. We are in the big thicket area of Texas and it's known for you know how 
thick and lush the vegetation is in this area. And when you get you know, this much sunlight reaching the ground, everything comes up and starts growing. Mother Nature gave park staff here the same opportunity to rebuild the native longleaf pine forest that once dominated this region of Texas. Because of the clearing from the hurricane, it gave us an opportunity to do some resource management uh, in this area a lot easier and faster than we would have normally been able to do it. An area of about 75 acres back here in the south side of the park on this sandy ridge would have been dominated by longleaf pine trees, uh, but it was mostly overgrown with loblolly pine trees and hardwoods, and the hurricane took a lot of those out. Uh, then we came in and mulched the understory, which was about six to eight feet high, and we followed that with a prescribed burn in the area the contractor coming in and doing a thinning of some of the remaining loblolly pine trees. We left a few of them, left all the longleaf pine trees here for seed trees, uh, and left a few of the hardwoods. And then the contractor also came back and planted over 25,000 longleaf pine tree seedlings uh, to bring that longleaf back to this area. And about 45 of that 75 acres uh, that we worked on here has been replanted in longleaf pine trees. Before uh, the state bought this property in 79. It had been logged in the 20s and again in the 50s. And so most of the forest was an even aged forest. All the trees were about the same age and that's not natural in a forest. And so when the hurricane came through and took out some of the canopy trees, then you have an uneven aged forest which creates more biodiversity because then you have more different types of plants at different levels which in turn feeds different animals uh, in the ecosystem. So it's a, it's a good thing as far as that goes. It's a bad thing when, you know, it destroys people's homes and businesses and things like that. Yes, hurricanes are part of nature and uh, we have definitely come back as a park and we're definitely coming back as a beautiful nature area also.